just like that, we're on to making sections. This butterfly is going together. This is Carrie's Canary Quilts, and we are working on the Tula Pink Butterfly Quilt, second edition. And we are done with making blocks, and we are putting sections together. So this week we're working on section one, which are these two, and section two, which is down here. This one's a little more difficult. I, I shouldn't say difficult, just a little more time consuming. And then this one's real easy to put together. So I am gonna show you today how I put this together, how I came up with these half square triangles. If you remember, if you've been watching, I numbered all my half square triangles. So I show you how I get to pull those out very easily. And how the whole thing goes together with a little bit of background we gotta cut. We only got one background piece over here in this one and uh, it goes together really nice. So if you're new here hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, you'll get to see this quilt go together or if you're interested I have links down below to the fabric kit and the pattern and uh, now that we're doing all the videos you got all the videos to follow and put this beautiful quilt together yourself. This is about a queen size quilt. So, without further ado, let's put some sections together. Alright, we're on week eight of our tulip pink butterfly quilt so long, and we are now to the sections. So we have done all our blocks. That's behind us. We're going to start putting this quilt together. And the next four weeks are going to be doing different sections, and this week we're doing section one and two. So here's section one, and a couple things I want to note. First, it's these sections right here up in this corner, the section one, that we're going to be working on first. So... We are going to need some background pieces cut, and they tell you what to cut, and it's for both the left and the right. So you will have enough with what they tell you to cut for the background pieces. You're going to need two of these small squares. You're going to need six of these small rectangles, four of these bigger squares, and two of the large rectangles. So not too many, too much background. And then... We need to, it also lists out what blocks we're going to need, which I pulled out. And if you kept your blocks labeled and in bags, um, organized, it made it very easy to find them and pull them out. Also, half square triangles. I numbered these like I showed you. Lifesaver. So I was able to come to here and see that I'm going to need Number one, half square triangles there. Two, three, four, and five. So I need one through five, and this is my own labeling system, which I showed you. I'm going to need half square triangles one through five to do this section. So I was able to go into that bag full of 25 different half square triangle um, groups and just grab one through five. I didn't have to look for the colors or the fabrics I needed. So it worked out really well. And then the other thing I did was these are put into put together by these sections of two. So I just kind of went ahead and labeled them. This will be the first section I do. This is going to be the second section and so on. And then we'll put those sections together until we get the whole thing done. We're going to be building a left and a right. So you can't just build two of the same thing. They need to be mirror image of each other. So we're going to have to make sure we get them laid out correctly. So with that being said, let me put this away. How's your fabric, extra fabric looking? Mine stayed pretty good. I'm really happy with how I kept it organized in that bag. And then this is all my blocks all organized within this one big bag. Anyway, here's the background pieces. I went through those. And, and I also went through the fact that we're going to need, with my labeling system, one through five of the half square triangles here. So I'll just lay these out so you can see them. 
And remember, five had several different ones in them. We are going to need number one block. Number one thing they show us, or tell us, I should say, is the medium log cabin block. We will need four of these to make the two, the left and right section one. I'm sorry, this is the small log cabin block. This is the medium log cabin block. And we need two of these, and we only made two. We made six of these, I believe, and only two of these. So, two of the mediums, four of the smalls in the purples, the purple chunky cross, we need both of those that we made, and we need the two large wheels that we just made last week. So, we can now start laying out our section. So, let's lay out the left one first, just so we can get an idea of what it's going to look like. And I only need one of these, so I'm going to set that aside. And this is going to be down in the right-hand corner. Our medium log cabin is going to be up here in this corner. I'm going to put the other one aside. Our chunky cross is going to be right here. And I'm going to set the other one aside. We've got a small log cabin right there. And we have a small log cabin right here. We don't have two of them. We only have one. And then we need to fill in with background and have square triangles. So let's start up here in this corner and I'm going to need two and three. So there's three and here's two. So whoops, two is pointing towards the corner like that and three is pointing towards the corner like that. And then on the other side we need a two. Over here, can you still see that? Yep, you can still see that. And that needs to point towards the corner like that. Pointing this way, pointing this way. So, Let's go back over here. We need a four, which is right here. And all of these on this side are gonna be pointing that way. And then we need two fives. We need two fives and we're going to need a five out here. That works. And then we need a solid pink five like this. Yep, we want one edge to be against the log cabin one edge to be against this. So this is correct. And then two of these. Just like this. So we have all of this side done. Okay. Now, let's go to the side above the chunky cross is two number ones. I don't have my number one. It's over here. It's going to be like this. And then we're going to have 
two more over here. We have a three and a four. Yes, like this. Because the side of this uh, log cabin and this touch the sides of the... Okay. The colors will be laid out. Now we need to put our backgrounds in. And we're going to have a large square there. A small rectangle there, small rectangle there, a small rectangle there, we need one of our small squares right here, and one of our squares here and one of these here one of these large rectangles oh goodness gracious okay there we go here's all my extra backgrounds for the right side but there is our left side laid out so let me get my machine set up and we'll start assembling and then we can do just the opposite for this okay I'm all set up to start sewing and I want to let you know that I'm not going to show any of the actual sewing because it's all quarter inch and by this point if you're working with me you've done a lot of different types of sewing so I've got my quarter inch foot in I've got ore fill thread in the top and the bobbin um, I think what I'm going to do is if it doesn't tell me how to iron the seam, like right here between these and these, I'm going to iron it open. I'm going to do this section. Then I'm going to do this section. And then I'm going to do the corner and then work over here. And then we'll put all of these together and well, we'll put these together, these together, and then we put them onto our big wheel block. So. I'm going to get started. So I'm going to start with these. And good practice is to pin the side you're going to sew so that when you get to the sewing machine, you know what edge you need to sew. So there's my first section. Ironed open, iron towards the solid patch. Okay, there's my section two. I iron these seams open. I actually iron towards the um, log cabin because that was just a long strip of fabric. And then I iron these open. I iron towards this big patch, put these together, and iron towards the top here. So I'm going to go on to the corner.
Okay, here's my corner unit. And I ironed these seams open, but then I ironed towards the patch. Here, I ironed towards the patch. And then when I put these on, I ironed this towards the upper unit and then this towards the upper unit. So that's how that one went together. Now I'm going to finish this side. Okay, I want to make a note here. So they have you iron towards the chunky cross on this one, which I did. But then when I got to this one, they also have you iron towards the log cabin. But I'm not going to do that. I'm ironing towards the patch so I can get nested seams here. I just think it'll lay better. That's what I'm personally doing on this one. So I iron towards the chunky cross here. I iron towards the patch here. This one, I iron the seams open and then I iron towards the patch. So now I'm going to put these three together and we're always going to iron to the left or towards the corner. I'm going to put these three together and we're always going to iron away from the corner. So our seams are going to be ironed this way around. And then we can come back and put it on here. So I'm just starting to put these sections together. Um, there are seams that are going to be need to be matched. Um, in here you're going to nest those seams that I talked about earlier where I iron them in opposite directions. Um, but it goes to the other fairly easily. So I got that top section done. Now I'm putting the next section done. And there are some seams to match here. So you can uh, start from either end that you want to start. Find those seams and put them together. It's just kind of personal preference at this point which way you start. Um, some of them are, so, are ironed open so they're a little more difficult to try to line up. You can see that I'm just trying to figure out which side to work from and I ended up working from the middle out to each end. So that seemed to work best for me. I finished that one up. Now I got my last little section to add on and you've just got that one seam there with the half square triangles you got to meet up. Get that sewn together and we'll come back and we can start putting the whole thing together. There we go. Pretty much ironed everything toward the way the pattern said, except for some seams that I noted that I ironed open. So we're taking the shorter edge and lining it up with the center or that um, wheel block. And I'm taking that center seam and there is a seam in the center of that section that you can line up with that seam. And then I work out to the edges and I line those up. And then I just start filling in with some pins to keep those edges together. I sew it a quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to iron it towards the wheel, which is uh, the way the pattern says to do it. And it really is kind of the path of least resistance because that upper section has a lot of seams in it. There we go. Now we're going to add that other section on. And there's a lot more seams to match up here. Um, I'm pointing them out right now. And uh, you got to match that corner. You got to match that center. So you just got to be a little more careful in this one, getting those seams matched up. But it's well worth the time and effort you put in. So start with ever, whichever seam you feel comfortable with. And then work from that direction. And then we're going to sew that a quarter of an inch. And this one we're actually ironing towards that section we're putting on. 
So you can see I'm just kind of working with those seams, lining them up, and making sure we got all our edges together. At this point, I'm just uh, double checking all my seams before I take it over the sewing machine and put it together. Okay, there we go. We got our left side section done. The upper left corner, basically. So it went together really well. Um, there were some seams to match, like um, here and along here. You know, I matched these seams right here. So, you know, just kind of be mindful of that. I ironed it the way the pattern said, other than when I told you. And it turned out great. Very simple. It's probably a little harder laying it out than it was to put it together. But anyway, I am going to get the right side laid out. I'm going to show you. And so that's going to be put together exactly the same way. So once I get it laid out, um, then I'll get it sewn and come back and we can um, show them off. Okay, we're putting the right together. We just did the left. Um, I used this, but I also utilized the one I just put together to kind of see where, just to, as a reference. So this is what it looks like. I've got my section here. This is a section. This is a section. This and this, this corner. And then these two go together, these three go together, and then these three go together. And then we put it all together. So, it's just like the other one, it's just mirror image. So when I get done, I'll put them up on my design board and you can see the mirror image of it all. But anyway, this is going to be sewn together exactly like the last one. So I'm just going to get it sewn together and we'll come and take a look at the two together. So, see you at the end! So there we go, there's section one that we just put together. Uh, it turned out really nice. Went together really well. All the pieces fit together well, which I don't know why that surprises me, but it always surprises me that my pieces fit. Um, I show you how I do the half square triangles and how I came up with the colors for that. So yeah, that's what it looks like. We've got the upper right and left corner of this butterfly done. Let's move on to section two. Okay, to get started on section two, which is right here, we don't need very many pieces. We need our large log cabin, the orange floating cross that looks like this, the small log cabins, and we need all six of them. We need two of these, we need two of the large. And then these are my half square triangles we're going to use, which I have labeled as six and seven. So that's what I labeled in here. They're all the same color though. That's how mine turned out. And then two background pieces down here in this rectangular shape. So we can get this laid out real quick. We need to assemble this, these three and we need to assemble these four well, this is ironed open, so actually I think I'll iron these open. Since this is ironed open, I'm going to iron these open. And then we'll start putting our sections together. We'll have to put this together, and then we can just work this way, or this way, whatever way we want to work. But anyway, let's get started here. Now I'm going to put these together and I'm going to iron these open. Okay, there's this section all ironed open, this section all ironed open. Now we have to put this one onto this one. So line up these seams between the three. It's going to be the seams between the three small log cabins and then these seams right here. Okay, now we can just start working on over. Why don't we start here? 
And we've got some seams to line up right here, right here. And I think right here. So let's do that. Now we can take this and add it on to here. Do ya? We think you're the helper here. Gotta push you just that way a little bit. There you go. So we're gonna sew this iron towards the half square triangles. And the last thing we want to do is add our background. And that will complete our section. Okay, so there is our section two completed. And now we just have to make a mirror image of the other side. So let's get that set up. Good, we're all set to go. I'm going to sew this together exactly like I sewed this. Get it up on the design board and we'll see what it looks like. There we go. There's section two. Uh, that went together pretty easily. There's a few more seams to match over here. Um, but that's about it. Not too bad. Um, and we got the right and left done. So these are the sections that are going to go underneath the section we just did. So yeah, there you go. Um, next week we're moving on to section three and or yeah three and four are the orange sections right here. We're going to be working on these orange sections next week. So uh, hit the subscribe button, notification bell. You can watch those sections go together, and you can watch this beautiful quilt go together. And don't forget, I do have links for the quilt and for the quilt pattern and the quilt fabric kit down below. Also, if you're interested in starting this. It's not too late. You can do this anytime. These videos will be there forever. I have the fabrics all listed out on my website so that when you're putting all of this together, you don't have to go through and figure out which fabrics to pull. I've already listed them for each block. So if you want to use that uh, information, it's over there on my website and you can take a peek at that. Um, save yourself a couple hours almost every time it seems like. So yeah. Um, anyway, I had fun making this video, I had fun doing these sections, and I'll see you in the next. Bye!